It is a singular honor, joy, and privilege to bring greetings and best wishes on behalf of the Methodist people across the length and breadth of Southern Africa, the primordial home of us all. The worldwide family of Methodist and Wesleyan Christians gathered in Durban, South Africa in August 2011 for the quinquennial meeting of the World Methodist Conference. Hosted by the Methodist Church of Southern Africa and the Methodist family from within the African continent, 2,000 delegates from the 77 member churches of the World Methodist Council sang together, prayed, listened intently, served, shared, paraded, and partied together, holding each other accountable for the mission of the church to go and make disciples of all nations. The event was held at Durban's state-of-the-art International Convention Center. Welcome to the Rainbow Nation, so aptly described by Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela. Here you will experience a melting pot of cultures. Here your senses will be treated to a cacophony of cliques and tribal rhythms. Here your taste buds will be treated to exotic traditional foods of diverse cultures. Here you will see extreme wealth and grinding poverty existing side by side. Here, if you look and listen carefully to the beautiful sights and sounds, art and culture, Africa will come alive and you will experience something new. It is my pleasure to welcome you home to the cradle of humanity. Man has learned to fly in the sky and man has learned to sail the oceans. But man has not learned to live with peace with man on earth. And this conference is a great conference that's trying to bridge this gap. The fact that you invited the Muslim League shows the World Methodist Church is truly putting, it's walking its talk in building bridges and making the world a safer place. I thank you, God bless you. The conference theme Jesus Christ for the Healing of the Nations, based on Revelation 22, formed the framework for the conference preaching, Bible study teaching, and keynote addresses. Jesus, having concentrated upon his Jewish mission and trained his disciples, sends them into all the world to make disciples of all the nations. So the elements of this story are the offering of healing and wholeness in Jesus for all, whatever their nationality, background, ethnicity, and the importance of faith in accepting that offer. There are a variety of experiences that we have in store for you in this program. So one of the things I'm sure when you leave here, you will have the music of Africa ringing in your ears. We are very grateful for the choirs, Africa University Choir and the Combined Choir for their input this morning. Our joy will be complete if at this conference held in Durban, South Africa, the World Methodist community can rediscover the passion for the healing of the world through the efficacy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is, upon, it is upon the spiritual progeny of Mr. Wesley to ensure that the current generation and the generations to come are not denied the opportunity to hear and to live by the truth that not only do all need to be saved, but that all can be saved. Nay, all can be saved to the uttermost and go on to know that they are saved. Under the umbrella of ecumenical women, 
a coalition of faith-based NGOs, we attend parallel events they organize, which were usually held at the United Nations owned Church Center for the UN, just across the UN building in New York. Something happened at Aldersgate, and now we promise that we will celebrate Aldersgate 275, not as a historical archive, but we will celebrate in World Methodist Evangelism Aldersgate 275 as a living experience where people in every continent experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And there was a vision that was burned and seared into my heart that remains today. And the vision is that men would have a role not just involved in this, but a role that would help men lead their families and congregations in a great compassionate act that would touch people right at the edges. And that, that one of the first things that they would do would be related to hunger. For Christians, marriage is a theological statement, not merely a civil right. We have long lost the argument on what constitutes a marriage because we have made it more about prenuptial contracts, benefits, and the pursuit of happiness. But from Genesis through Revelation, the biblical witness uses marriage as a metaphor for the relationship God seeks with humanity. The immortal God eternally bound with mortals, the Holy One faithful to the adulterous ones. If you read this text, you find out what God is doing. It is the most harsh text of all for adultery and divorce demonstrates that separate from God, we are lame and blind and disabled. God heals through prayer, through compassion, through friendship, through listening, through trust, through touch, through tears, through love. We, in the wide and deep Wesleyan family, have a wide and deep understanding of healing. And lying behind and under and over all this is the astonishingly big idea of God expressed by St. Paul in Romans chapter 8. No less than the healing and the restoration of all creation, of the whole cosmos, a creation that groans as if in labor pains, says Paul, but will be released from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. A creation of which we human beings are a part. Today this council takes pleasure in honoring Rosalind Colwell as a servant of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Due to the work I have been doing for the last 30 years in Nigeria, it is not actually I that am being um, honored today. It is those that Christ was so passionate about. It is the least of those, the little ones. As long as we are separated as churches there, we are not only not credible, we are not obedient disciples of Christ. Philip taught this, and therefore he was committed to this prayer of Jesus Christ that was already mentioned in the beginning of this session, that we are all one, that we all may be one, so that the world might believe. Ecumenism is church at work. The Methodist and Wesleyan family came to Durban and supported local crafters through their souvenir purchases, delivered school supplies to local church-sponsored educational ministries and mission projects, and packaged 101,000 meals for Stop Hunger Now's Relief Ministry, 
within the African continent under the leadership of the World Fellowship of Methodist and Uniting Church Men's Hunger Initiative. 15,000 of those meals will be coming to these children um, who are most grateful for the contribution that you have made, not only labor-wise, but for these delegates who have taken time out of their busy programs to come and share the meal with the children. Um, we want to thank you and um, say God bless you for your contribution. A conference highlight involved a street parade in which the local Methodist family joined the conference delegates in parading through the streets of Durban for a rally at City Hall. The Durban Salvation Army Band led the street parade in marching, singing, and witnessing to the joy of a life with Jesus Christ at its center. So I want to encourage the bishops and leaders of the churches to continue involving more young people in the life and ministry of the church, especially in the selection process in becoming members of the council and participant to the conference. I am delighted to say that the last quinquennium we had three young people elected to be part of the presidium, which allowed us to be involved and connected with the life and mission of the World Methodist Council. Methodist noble people, I beg you in the name of all Palestinian children, do not give up on your Jewish friends. Continue providing them with friendship. Help them stand on their side. They need you more than ever before. But who told you that to be the friends of the Jews should automatically be enmity and antipathy against the Palestinians. You don't know us. Maybe here in your South Africa, you know us better than Americans or Europeans. You don't know us, you know lots about us. The lobby against the Palestinians is so powerful. In front of our world, we cannot live without a vision. Our, we need to dream that nation can be healed. They will not be if we do not dream that they can be healed. We had a dream in Mozambique, and we were nothing. And this dream came true, but it is not our dream. It is the dream of God. It is the dream of God for us and for the world. We are just asked to dream together with Him. Let us be then dream the dream of God. Let us have the vision of God. We were told that the Methodist and Wesleyan family from the continent of Africa would be here if we held it here. And you are here, and your numbers are impressive, your members are wonderful, and we thank you for the contagious joy and enthusiasm, for your bright, happy smiles, and most of all, for the spirit of Jesus Christ which lives in the Methodist people in Africa. The key to the healing of the, the world of the nation begin with the healing of the church. We must be healing because we have a same sick that divide us, that put block, impediment to love each other. We need healing. The church need the healing. Leaders of Methodist and Wesleyan churches from around the world came to Durban and were blessed by the experience of joining with other believers, celebrating Jesus Christ for the healing of nations. Following the Durban conference, the Methodist and Wesleyan family goes forth to share God's saving love through Jesus with a world in need of healing and restoration.